Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Friday Live. My name is Ashley Hay. I'm a mixed media artist, and today I have the lovely Amanda Jensen in the studio with me from Abundant Creativity. Well, she's not actually here with me. She is in Queensland in her own studio at Nanangu. Now, if you did miss the live from last week, it is actually posted on the PowerTex Australia YouTube channel, so you can actually watch that. So please um, have a look and check out Amanda and see where she is located. But today, of course, she is going to do a wonderful demonstration, which will be mixed media. So let's welcome Amanda to the studio. We are going to be looking at texture and colour with PowerTex Art Supplies today. So be sure to hang around and I'm sure that you'll be inspired to create this weekend. So Welcome to the studio, Amanda. It's wonderful to Hi. have you here. So I'm excited you... to be back. <laughs> so you have a real treat for us today. We're going to be creating with um, texture and colour. So shall we just, I'll pop you onto the main screen so everyone can see. So look at that beautiful artwork that Amanda is holding up there. Isn't that just awesome? So I can't sure. wait, Amanda, looking forward to seeing how you have pulled this lovely piece together. And, of course, you're going to cover the texture and pattern making that you've done in that. And then you're going to talk a bit about colour as well. So it's going to be super exciting. It is. I had so much fun making this. So what have you used to create the um, texture? Did you want to, I'll pop the art table up and um, then we can have a look at how you actually create that beautiful texture. Okay, so the texture is used just with, I'll do it this way, some power text and some stone art. Beautiful. So I just get a little container. You just need a little plastic container here. And I pour in a little bit of PowerTex first. So just pop a bit in there. My plastic back on. And then we get some stone art. And I love the stone art because you can make very soft textures, which is how we're going to start today. And we're just going to use very soft textures. Wonderful. So and you're not actually mixing it into a clay? I am. I'm mixing oh. this. And I'm going to mix it to the consistency of about uh, like toothpaste, I guess, uh -huh. or peanut butter. So it doesn't take to, it doesn't take very long to mix. A little bit more. I've just got to scoop around the sides. So quite a stiff mixture, but not totally into that air dried clay that we no, like to mix. No, no. See, this is still. You can see that it's still quite wet. Scoopy, scoopy. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. So that's about the consistency that we need. Nice. So that was really easy. And how I started, I'll just do a little demo of how I started and how I made all the different textures. So I like getting my hands messy. So <laughs> it was literally just like wiping some peanut butter onto your toast in the morning. <laughs> I like that analogy. It makes it very easy <laughs> for everyone to understand. Yeah, and I just get my hands and I just smoothed it out over the canvas. We need Ooh, a little bit getting... more. I do. I paint with my hands too <laughs> a lot. So I um, actually get my nails done every week so you can't see all the power text and the paint underneath. That's exactly what I do as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that is semi-covered. You can go right to the edges. But I'm just going to clean off my hand now. Yep, 
just get a little bit of it off. So while it's still nice and wet, I get a trowel, which has just disappeared for a second. Just give me a minute. I must have dropped it. Okay, just give me one minute. Sorry, my... Um... <laughs> oh, here it is. Sorry. I've got so many goodies on the table. So I just nice. get my palette knife. Yeah. And just sit and play and it's lovely and relaxing. Can you just bring it into the middle of the I shot a little bit closer? Um, That's it. About there. Okay, so you can just make your different textures on here and I'll wipe a little bit off and I actually sat and when I did the original one I sat and played for quite a long time and I keep so, I'm what sorry so you just basically play with mark making on that yep. um, textured surface yep you can get here and you can scoop out little bits just like that and can you That's get how it I sort of... nice and flat as well if you want to you can you can you yep. just it's just we can get another which way am I going palette knife lovely you can smooth it out and if you do something you don't like it or you're unsure you can just smooth it out and go back into smooth it smooth it out and start again so how um, long does that take to dry Amanda a few days um, because so you it's want quite to wet. do your texture and then allow it to dry and then actually um, do your colouring once you've done your texture. Yes, the one that I actually did took three days to dry. So it was yep. yeah, it took three days to dry because it was quite wet. Um, to do on this one here, which camera am I on? Can you see that back here? Now this one. To do the little nests, I just added a little bit more stone art to make it more like an air dry clay. And same with the little balls that are on here. If I hold it this way, you can sort of see. It's actually mm. better on the art table, Amanda, because the vision okay. is clearer. So we can That's see better. it. That's better. Yep. Okay, so I just moulded these. I added a little more stone art to the mixture I had already made. And I made little nests here and I've got little eggs that I made and the same here. Um, these textures here, I was just swiping up the palette knife. I'll just swipe it up this way. And Beautiful. the mermaid scales that I had here, that was with a um, broader palette knife and mm -hmm. I just indented it along this way and just wiped it and I've got some mermaid scales. Wonderful. So with the little nests, you don't use that peanut butter mix, do you? You would actually mix it into the clay. Yes, I just mixed a little bit more stone art into what I already had and my left over in my container just to make it a bit firmer and a bit drier. Yeah. And um, I just moulded all my little little nests there and all the little balls. Just hold it so a bit they... closer to the camera so we can have a proper look. Wow, that looks awesome. So... We can see those lovely textures. And it's really important, isn't it, to have some flat areas that aren't yes. textured because if everything is textured, your eye just got doesn't have flat. anywhere to rest. Yeah, we've got nice flat lines here. Yep. Um, and that's where we can dry brush and we can just, you don't want it to look flat. You just want to have hills and valleys and texture and you know, different surfaces. Exactly. So, yeah, that looks great. Awesome. So just basically playing with your stone art and um, doing some mark making into it. Yes, it is. It was lovely and relaxing. You just sit there and play and like you're a child and you've got some Play-Doh. So. <laughs> okay, and you're going to show us something really cool with the colour now. So that's excellent. Thanks for showing us that. I am, I am. This I came across this next technique probably by mistake. Um, I was wanting to make some 
alcohol inks. And I live in a very, very small country town and we don't have any art supply stores or anything here. So I've, I, I actually make my own alcohol ink from our Colour Tricks pigments. Nice. So I'll just show you what I do. I actually use the just isopropyl alcohol mm -hmm. that you can pick up from Bunnings or most yeah. hardware stores. I'm just going to pour a little bit in. And all you need, just a minute, I'll just get my palette knife again. Wipe it off. This looks okay. like fun. <laughs> it is. It is. I've actually got um, every colour of the um, pigments I have an alcohol spray to go with. So we actually, can you see that? All you need is just two a small scoops. amount. Yep. yep, just a small amount. So I just do And I two. imagine it would go a fairly long way, Amanda. Oh, yes, yes. It goes a very long way. I've still got all my original pigments that I started with. So I'll just pop that lid on. And give it a bit of a shake. And I'll just start. This is see how it just gives you that little bit of just a delicate colour and shimmer. Yeah, lovely. You can go as soft or as hard. And what happens is the alcohol evaporates and for some reason which I haven't worked out why um, your colour and your pigments stay so, nice. and it doesn't take too long to dry and so you can use your matte pigments as well like that yes yes yep wonderful got, well that um, gives you all sorts of possibilities doesn't it <laughs> it does it just gives you a, a, another layer of colour that you can do um, we use it quite a lot with our wine bottle ladies and some of our other um, PowerTech sculptures because it gives us a bit of a base colour to start with. Mm. Um, but how I coloured all this texture, I did start off with the sprays. This is the nice blue one. I've used it um, to do the seahorse. Lovely. And we've got the green. This is... I can't remember this one. What the, I didn't put it. Sorry, it's still on the shelf. <laughs> That's all right. But I just started having a bit of a spray, and you can you can mix colours. So I can do the. It's beautiful and green soft, with the bronze. isn't it? So for it is people who like those lovely pastel colours. Um, it you know it's a lovely soft start. It is, and, and, I, and I wanted to do this, um, this particular piece, I wanted to make it nice and soft and pastel-y because I do a lot of bright colours. I love the way that it's also pooling, so you're getting some colour that's deeper and some colour that is softer. And once the alcohol evaporates, it'll dry like that. Mm, gorgeous. So, yeah. And then after that... I like using, I've got these really old brushes. Which way? These really old brushes and they're <laughs> wonderful for dry brushing. Um, so I don't throw out any of my old brushes at all. I've got fuzzy um, brushes that I love yeah. for dry brushing too. Yeah, this so one. Yeah, favorites. this is a good one. So I get a little bit of, I use the Easy Coat Glossy. And I just put a tiny little pool, yep. probably a bit too big. And then we might try some of the blue. Just wipe my palette knife. If you are watching, please um, drop us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. And um, we'd love to see some of your artwork as well in the Creative Hub. So, of course, there is the PowerTex Creative Hub where you can actually create, connect and share with us on Facebook. 
And um, if you need any uh, import or any, you've got any questions about anything regarding Powertex Art Supplies, you can ask them there. I'm just going to just quickly dry this. I'm just waving it off to the side to get the alcohol <laughs> to evaporate for me. That's okay. So um, no, just okay, while you're good. doing that, um, if you would like to connect with Amanda, then you can connect with Amanda online. So, of course, she is at Abundant Creativity and uh, just follow the links in the description to her website and to her Facebook and Instagram pages. So, um, of course, if you live in or near Nanangu, then she is definitely the go-to person there for you to connect with. Okay, I'm organised now. So <laughs> some a lot of your shimmery sort of pigments will still look like they're wet, but they're not actually wet. Um, so this is quite, this is nice and dry now. So what I do is I just grab my trusty old brush and you just mix it in with a little bit of your pigment. I like to do lots and lots of very light layers. Mm. So what I do, I'd probably go over here for this colour. And my dry brushing is very, very random. Some people like to be a little bit more particular. <laughs> but with something like this, see how the blue's just catching on all the texture? Yeah, lovely. And, of course, if people did want to use their acrylics, they can use acrylic paints or any of the stuff that yeah. they've got in their stash, like their Lumiere paints, whatever you've got, you can actually have a play on this texture. You can, you can use it and you can dry brush with nearly anything. So this is, I actually, I find dry, I love dry brushing. I find it quite relaxing. Um, I keep my, I don't wet my brush at all in between colours. Mm. So I've got, this is one of my favourites. It is the bronze gold. Yeah, I love the bronze gold. I, I think if you I've got, haven't got bronze me. gold in your stash, <laughs> that is a must-have. So mm -hmm. uh, Kathy is here watching and um, she's asking, would the alcohol mix be much like the Bisters? I don't know. Maybe that's a good question of the Bisters. I haven't played with the Bisters a lot. I've sort oh, of got really? a bit of Oh, Amanda, no, you no. are in for a treat. My goodness. I've so got it's... some, but I haven't had a lot of <laughs> time to play. Oh, my goodness, you will love them. <laughs> so, Kathy, I will take that one and just say um, basically you can see that they are a softer colour, so it just depends on the effect that you're after. So, of course, you could use your bisters in place of... Um, you know this, but you've got lots of pigments, I know, so you could have a play with this and just try it out, get some spray bottles and have a play with a few colours and then dry brush back into it. But, um, yeah, absolutely, like I was saying before, you can use your bisters, you can use your pigments with the dry brushing technique like Amanda is showing you now, but I guess that first um, spray of colour is just that really light light effect and of course we've got our liquid powers which are just gorgeous we do. And super intense so um i actually exciting. i actually used the white liquid power to help soften the colors mm. um, because i wanted it to look nice and soft and pastely if i got a little bit heavy-handed with my dry brushing i would just give this a bit of a spray over the top yep it's and it quite, just, quite yeah. handy to have the white, isn't it? It is. See, it just sort of it softens it up again. Yeah. And even down here, like I was a bit heavy-handed on purpose here, but if I go over a little bit, it'll just soften it up. And I like the way that you can, with the liquid powers, it's really good to spritz it and then spritz it with water and let it run and then you get mm -hmm. a real variety of lights to really dark, intense colour. Yeah, and sometimes I've um, spritzed it with something, you know, like 
the the dark the purple or is that that's a blue one sorry the blue and while it's still a little bit of wet while it's still a little bit wet I'll add in a copper or something with it and they actually they oh, blend really nicely together hmm. So you just need to remember that with the liquid powers, you do need to do it onto the wet surface of the power tax. So um, if you obviously spray it onto um, ivory, then you're going to get, you know, more pastel-y colours. Whereas mm. if you have an ivory base and then you put down some transparent, it will um, have the original intensity of those magentas. I can actually show you because this is my demo piece. So I'll just pick a spot and I can show you how these, they come up. I actually use them like spray paints as well. Yeah, and then I that, like to spritz it with water and mm -hmm. you get that lovely. I had this, this was probably the biggest play I had, I just sort of started getting things out and seeing what happened if I mixed them together. And I love, I'm, I need a big container of the white because <laughs> I use it so much. But I just sat and played and played and experimented with colours and it was quite mm. um, fun just to see what would happen. Mm. So the other nice thing to do with the liquid powers is actually to pre-mix it. So put some of your Powertex colour down on a palette um, and actually put a little bit of liquid power down and mix it until you get the correct colour that you're looking for and then paint it like you do with acrylic paints rather than spraying it on. So Robin is also here. So hello, Robin. Lovely to see you. And um, she's just saying, she's asking a similar question to Kathy. She's asking, do you use your alcohol spray with or instead of your Bista? So as Amanda's saying, she hasn't used the Bista much, but you could experiment and have a play. Like she's saying, just try different things, see what works. It's all about playing with layers, isn't it, Amanda? It isn't getting very messy like I always do. <laughs> but it's fun. I, th I think it's good to be a bit childlike and a, bit, um, a little bit experimental and just see what happens and rather than worrying about what the end result's going to be because you can mm. get some nice surprises. Yep, there's no mistakes, just happy little accidents. That what, yes, that's exactly. What Bob Ross says, isn't it? <laughs> Yes, <laughs> exactly. So this is just how I did it. I just I probably sat and played for a few hours until I thought, okay, I'm done and I'm I'm happy yep. with it. And it is really, really easy, isn't it? At that point oh, where yes. you've yep. got that texture done just to lose yourself in the actual artwork and the colour play. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I had some music playing and I just, yeah, you lost track of time. And it seems to have a life of its own once you start colouring it too. So I, I love the process. Definitely. So now, Amanda, I know that you are going to be doing, uh, if anyone would like to do this process in a workshop, you're actually going to be offering that. So if you are in... Nanangu and you would like to um, you know create one of these canvases then you can actually get hold of Amanda and she is doing a special introductory offer for only $55. Now that is um, a superb special offer so um, if you're watching this in replay it probably won't be repeated for too long so you can see the dates on there uh, 2022 um, so, yeah, um, really, really wonderful, Amanda, that you're offering that. And, um, of course, if you're not near the Nangu, then you can just pull your Powtex products out and have a, have a bit of a play with, um, with all the different Powtex products like Amanda's showed us today. So it's been absolutely super, Amanda, just seeing how you play with some of those techniques and the sorts of things that you do and enjoy. So thank you for sharing. Thank um, you. 
Now, I, I've told people how they can connect with you. And then, of course, mm -hmm. next week, I'm actually going to do a bit more on colour. So if you love colour and you want to know a little bit more about mixing Powtex colours, I'm going to show you how you can actually mix your Powtex colours next week. So that is one not to miss. I look forward to being back on the art table again with you guys, doing a little bit of a demo next week. So I'm pretty excited about that. So next week it will be with me. And um, all righty. So, uh, of course, you can go to the Powtex website as well to learn more about Powtex and there are lots of YouTube videos explaining the different Powtex products now too. So there's a whole explainer series, what is, that is actually available online for you guys to be able to access. So Amanda, I'm just going to bring you up on the screen. Thank you so much for being on with us today. And I know that if anyone has any questions that um, you will drop into the chat and answer mm -hmm. those uh, questions as well. So um, thank you for that. And um, thank you for being here with us. So as well as, as well as that, if you are interested and you are a little bit remote and you haven't got any trainers near you in Australia or anywhere in the world, um, I have actually created some online art courses where you can actually go to Ashley Hay Art Academy and you'll find several art courses there on using Powtex in your artwork. So if you haven't got access to any teaching, then this is the next best thing so you can check those out. And of course, drop me a line if you've got any questions about anything at all. The great thing with those courses that I do do is there is actually a support group for each one. So if you're stuck at all along the way, you can contact me and you can actually uh, get feedback on anything that you need feedback with and there is also lifetime access to those. So you can keep revisiting the content again and again. All right, everyone. Uh, well, from Amanda and I, um, Amanda, that canvas is beautiful. I love the softness Thank of you. it. I'm just going to pop it up again so everyone can see. So there it is, the finished product. And you can see how that um, gold and the blues are just working mm -hmm. because, of course, mm -hmm. orange and blue are complementary colours on the colour wheel. So mm -hmm. this is one of the reasons why this uh, canvas is working so successfully is because you have got those high contrast areas. So it's not mm -hmm. all light, it's not all dark. And you've also got the contrast in the colours themselves as well. So beautiful piece. I'm sure everyone who comes to you will love doing artwork with you, Amanda. And we've got a few other po people popping in and saying hello. But please, if you do have any questions, feel free to ask them. So uh, Bye, everyone. We will see you, you next week, same time for Friday Live. Ciao. Bye.